Hello, I'm the Northern Vocal Coach and welcome back to Now Then. Hello and welcome back to Now Then. Today I have my lovely friend Beth here. Hello Beth. Hiya. Hello. And welcome back to Theatre Thursdays. Another Theatre Thursday. Yes. We just had the news that theatres are going to be opening again from May the 17th. Please, Please. we Please. hope, we hope, hope, hope. Good news though, really good news. Like, just good to have an idea of an end in sight. We've all just been sort of stuck in limbo, haven't we? Today, we're going to be reacting to another Leia Salonga video. What's not to love? There's so much to talk about. There should just be the Leia Salonga channel. <laughs> it's Leia Salonga Thursdays. <laughs> And in this performance, it's Leia Salonga and Ruthie Henshaw, who is also phenomenal. She's like West End royalty, really, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, she's a British West End legend. I remember her from those The Sound of Musicals BBC specials. <gasps> yes, with John Barrowman. Doing anything you can do. It was the first time I'd seen acting through song being playful and explorative. Because they know the music so well that, that they can just then let it go there's room to play without off-roading the beat and the rhythm. And the composer has written it for a reason, to deliver the, a certain effect to, to the audience and for the character. We're reacting to another Miss Saigon video, a London performance with Leia and Ruthie. Ruthie playing Ellen, Leia playing Kim, and it's the first time that the two ladies meet each other in the show. So we see that scene and it also runs into Ruthie singing Now That I've Seen Her, which I've heard has been cut from the most recent versions, but I think it's a stunning song. But they did put another song in, ah. yeah, called Maybe. So they thought it was better. Yeah, they felt that the character of Ellen needed something different. Oh, it's still a song that, uh, that Ellen yeah, sings? Yeah, still a song that Ellen sings. I think maybe they wanted a softer Ellen. Oh, that's interesting. They wanted to take the character to a different place. Yeah, the, the protagonist is, is Kim. And um, maybe they felt that Ellen having an, an, another big, massive number was maybe too much, but I don't know. I, I know a lot of fans were like, why? Why are you taking this song out? Because it worked for so many years. Right, should we go? Should we go for it? I would just Let's... said, right, right, should we go? Should we go? <laughs> should we go? Bye! Right, bye. Ruben and Schoenberg are so good at that transition music and putting us in the right frame of mind for the next scene, moving us into the, the next thought. I was just thinking, like watching Ruthie being wheeled on the, <laughs> on the trolley. <laughs> in a world where you have to suspend your disbelief enough to not think that you're on a moving bed in the middle of a theatre, like hearing that music just settles you into the place you need to be to start the scene. It's as much for the audience as it is for the performers on stage. Yeah, you're right. And she was so, so natural, so, so lovely there. She's realised. <laughs> well, you must be, of course, your John's wife, are you not? I thought I'd see what had to happen. You must be Kim. First one to find you. Please come inside. No one will hurt you. I'm Chris's wife. My name is Ellen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the writing was so good that they gave the audience that moment and they used a theme which has come earlier on in the show to spark a feeling in, in the audience. They'll go, oh, I remember that theme. This is the hour. That's really their calling card, isn't it? Taking themes from 
other times within the musical and bringing them in. Like, it happens so much in Les Mis. Does it happen in opera a lot? I think it does. In Carmen, there's a just a brief phrase of music that symbolises death. It's like, do -do 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 -do, or something. Mm -hmm. And every time you hear that, it's like, oh, someone's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen... Ruthie's character there, she just tried to de-escalate the situation by going back to speech. They're not in a place where they can speak to each other. And this silence is an absolute gift. And I'm so happy that they were brave enough to write... The, I mean, it's not silence because we hear music and the music is telling us what's going on in their heads, which is a lot. Uh, and you can see it in their body language and in their faces. But it, uh, I mean, Kim looks like she's frozen to the spot, but she, there's a lot going on in her head. The bravery to have this moment of stillness because this is a pivotal moment in the show. In the show, yeah. It changes her fate. This is so intimately played. And they are singing, but they've approached it like text. They allow some words to be spoken. It's sort of speaking on pitch. It's about to get less talkative, though. Yeah. I'm <laughs> glad <laughs> like one layer then one layer <laughs> one layer so longer <laughs> it was one layer then another one layer. layer and one roofie <laughs> yeah it was one layer then one roof but it was one phrase and then an identical phrase and then a, an escalated phrase with more added on an escalation of panic yeah you could hear it in the music yeah inside mm. there was this sort of one in, one up on each other Please tell me you are lying. That's the first thing she says after this initial shock has gone through her body. Oh, the emotion is just so it's heavy. Do you say it's Chrissy's? Kiss me down. My son is Chrissy's. I had a dream for my son to belong, not live his life in the streets like a rat. We aren't rich, but we'll show her our load. Chris and I are totally together on the I wish I had seen uh, her thought to say, then you must take the child with you, because that is a pivotal shift where she's gone, my life, my life with Chris and, the, and my child, and then gone, well, that's, I can see that's not going to happen. And there's a change of thought, then take my child and give him a better life. Please. It's a massive, massive change of tact. Her her objective for the entire show has now switched. But it was that quick because yeah. her child's life to her is worth more than her own. And so it's an easy it, it's an easy decision for her only in that she knows for a fact that she would rather he had a better life. Yeah. It's so interesting how it when you have heated discussions like this, we speak in melody anyway and it's interesting mm. to see how this has been notated in ways that imitate uh, how speech humans yeah how humans interact when emotions are high recitative they do it so well they take what would normally be spoken and and add it to music and there's not many musicals that are completely and wholly sung through obviously now we have hamilton and we talked about that sort of being in a similar vein, but not. This sort of style allows for the whole piece to just go up a level and the stakes to be higher all the way through. They have more tools to work with to sort of move an audience through the whole show. We don't ever lose that thread of the music through the piece. Constant music underneath. You don't have to sort of come to a song from nothing. Yeah, keep your child needs you. Chris is married to me. We want kids of our own.
my I, gosh. I just, I, I can't for a second because my whole body... <laughs> Literally shivers. If I was sat in the theatre watching this, that's when I would burst into tears. It's so overwhelming. It's such a skill to be able to, to do that and be able to give that sort of speech. It was, it was like she was shouting at her, but she wasn't. She added like a, a cry sound to the to the voice. We actually do that a lot in musical theatre because, um, oh, I'm giving you the little secrets behind the scenes of musical theatre, because when we're performing an emotional piece or doing an emotional moment, we can't really physically cry on stage and have a optimum vocal performance. So we, you, this is very strange. We use the word cry a lot and we call it cry quality. I can't do it. Cry, 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 cry. And it sounds like you're, you've got that emotional response like, hello Beth, how are you today? I don't know. <laughs> like you just add that little yelp quality on top and it makes you sound like you're in that emotional state. It reminds me of you at the barricade, listen to yes, this. Absolutely. No one is coming to help you to fight. And oh my gosh, everything is happening in the orchestra as well. Like the feeling and emotion and the energy you get from the orchestra behind the one note being being held, but the, sort of being pummeled and pummeled against. Build up of tension. No one is talking or sleeping or flicking through their programme at this moment. Everybody's eyes are on her at this moment. It's a powerful moment for the character when she makes a decision because the last song we, we reviewed, she's singing about how her future rests on the actions of someone else. And this is the character saying, I have made a decision. You're going to do what I tell you. She's taken control of her life for maybe the first time, but she knows that she'll do anything. Hello, just me. Thank you for watching Room 317 Part 1. Follow the link to watch Part 2. If there's an advert, give it a watch. It just helps us get better content out for you. Keep supporting and subscribe if you haven't. See you soon. Bye. because I do it all the time when I speak, but I can't do it on purpose. <laughs> I... Cry! 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> cry! Yes! Cry! <laughs> <laughs> no, you just sound like a bird. <laughs> oh, the lessons continue. <laughs> <laughs> we never stop learning. Oh my gosh.